Hi everyone, this is a second part of the Vesper video and in this uh, video I'm going to actually talk about how we can use the Vesper concept to predict molecular structures but before we can do that we need to remember a couple of things and learn the electron geometries of Vesper. So uh, before I get to the electron and molecular geometry there's a couple of things I want you to keep in mind um, while using Vesper. First off in your lowest structure, uh, if you have double or triple bonds, they count as one bonding pair in Vesper when applying Vesper. Okay, and later on you'll see that you need to differentiate between bonding and lone pairs. Uh, so a double or a triple bond, even though there's more than one bonding pair, obviously for double bond we two bonding pairs, we count them as just one. The second thing is you want to always remember to count the lone pairs because the molecular structure depends on whether you have lone pairs or not. Vesper can also be used for molecules that have, uh, have multiple inner atoms or multiple central atoms so you might have and we'll do a one example with uh, several central atoms in it to basically get an idea of what that molecule looks like. Um, Overall, you know, you basically will, what you will do in that case, you're going to do the molecular structure of the inner atom, one atom at a time, and then later on combine the overall structure to get an idea of what the molecule looks like. Another thing is resonance structures. You know you can draw multiple resonance structures sometimes for a particular molecule or ion. In uh, the case for Vesper, for using Vesper, all of those resonance structures, even though they might look different from a Lewis structure perspective, they all have, in the end, the same Vesper geometry. So you only need to determine the Vesper structure of one of them, uh, and you don't need to determine the Vesper structure for all the different resonance structures. Now, before we uh, use Vesper, we need to know what the electron geometries that Vesper predicts. And remember the whole idea here, going back to the previous video, the idea of Vesper is that the electron pairs around a particular atom will try to repel each other as much as they can in three dimension and that results in certain electron geometries. So these are the electron geometries. So the central atom here is indicated by the letter M and then the electron pairs are indicated by these lines here. So they're bonding pairs in this case. Um, if, for example, you have, I, I should say they're electron pairs, it doesn't really matter for electron geometry purposes whether they're bonding or lone pairs in this case. So if the central atom has two uh, electron pairs, then the furthest they can get away from each other is by having a 180 degree separation. And that gives us a structure that we call the linear structure. If the electron pairs are three around the central atom, so three electron pairs, the furthest they can get away from each other is 120 degrees and that's called a trigonal planar structure. Four electron pairs we talked about in the previous video, that's the example for CH4. The furthest these four pairs can get away from each other is by adopting the tetrahedral structure. So that's what it looks like, the angle is 109.5. If you have five um, electron pairs around the central atom, then the furthest you can get away is by adopting something called a trigonal bipyramidal structure. And this is basically pyramids, two pyramids. If you imagine the look of a pyramid, there's two pyramids here. The base of the pyramid is a triangle. Okay, so you have a triangle base, and then you have one pyramid going to the top and one pyramid going to the bottom here. Okay, so then that's why it's called trigonal for the base, the triangular base, and then bipyramidal, two pyramids. And then lastly, if you have six electron pairs around the central atom, you're going to have what we call the octahedral structure. And that basically is the same, almost the same as trigonal bipyramidal, except that it's two pyramids, but then you have, uh, instead of a triangle as your base, you have a square as your base. Okay, so there are four electron pairs here in the, in the center as the base, okay? Now the electron geometry is just the first step in using Vesper, the second and you know maybe more important step of course is the molecular geometry and this is a lot more uh, uh, more categories in them. So each of the electron geometry that I just mentioned, linear, uh, trigonal plane, tetrahedral, 
trigonal bipyramidal and octahedral symbolized by these letters uh, these numbers here two three four five and six each one of them remember these are just the total number of electron pairs now you know um, based on your experience of drawing Lewis structures at this point that some of those electron pairs could be bonding pairs some of them could be lone pairs so as a result depending on which combination of bonding and lone pairs you have the actual three-dimensional structure the actual molecular structure might not be the one that we listed here because this assumes these structures assume that all of them are bonding so if some of these are uh, lone pairs you actually have a different structural name so that's what's shown on this table is the entire list of possible combination of lone pair and bonding pair that would lead us to give a particular uh, name to that structure okay and then what's important here in the last column is the sh is shown the bonding angle that you will have between the two atoms around the central atom okay uh, so I'm just gonna go through let's say the one with tetrahedral here just to give you an example of how to use this let's say you have a total of four electron pairs right which is here listed here uh, there are basically three different possibilities that you might have those electron pairs distributed. You might have all four of them as a bonding pair. In this case, that, that means you have zero lone pair. If that's the case, then the structure is what we would call tetrahedral. Okay, and there are several examples of this. I'm going to show you some right now. So these are some examples of molecules that have tetrahedral molecular geometry so you can see that the central atom is right in the middle and then you have all four of these being bonding there are four other atoms bonded to the central atom going back to this table now the second possibility if you have four pairs around the central atom is that you might have three of them as bonding and only one of them lone pair okay so if that's the case then you have a structure called the trigonal uh, pyramid or trigonal pyramidal depending on which textbook you use and the angle would be a little bit less than 109.5 let me give you uh, an example of what this thing looks like so you can see this is what it would look like so you can see that it's pretty much a tetrahedral structure except that now one of those pairs is a lone pair so it just kind of sits on you know sits and belong to the central atom because of course the lone pair is just in the valence shell of this uh, central atom so it just belongs to that central atom now as far as angle is concerned uh, I want to mention something uh, important here which is that when the electron pair exists as a lone pair it exerts a little bit more repulsion to the bonding pairs than you would expect for just a bonding pair alone okay so in the tetrahedral case the, the angle is actually 109.5 in the case of a lone pair if you have a lone pair then the angle is less than 109.5 now what the actual angle is is actually a little hard to predict that depends on what kind of atoms is the central atom and what kind of atoms are the terminal atoms the atoms on the outer side um, so if you have for example NH3 molecule in this case that angle would be 107 degrees but if you have you know something that's bigger the angle might actually be a little different okay so you want to be a little careful in that so going back to this table when you look at the trigonal pyramidal structure or trigonal pyramid structure you notice that what I wrote down here is just less than 109.5 degrees because I don't want to uh, you know give a specific value here because that value might only be uh, applicable for certain molecules and not for all molecules so that's why that uh, uh, that's what your answer should be if I were to ask you a question like this in a context of an exam or a quiz okay um, now the last possibility if you have four pairs of electrons you have two of them being bonding and two of them being lone pair in this case your structure would look something like this which uh, as you can see is right here and this is what we refer to as the bent molecular structure because it's basically a tetrahedral uh, but with two of the uh, pairs of electrons now being lone pairs and again the angle here is going to be less than 109.5 and whether what the actual values would really depend on the molecule you're talking about for something like water that will be about 105 degrees uh, is this angle right here but you know again I, I don't want to give you an actual value because it really depends on the actual molecule and the size of the atoms that are involved 
Okay, so <clears throat> how do you put all these together in, in terms of using the Vesper theory itself? Well, the steps are listed here, okay? So if, if you want to use the Vesper theory to predict structures of compounds, you know, simple compounds, binary compounds, things that basically have, it could be binary compounds, it could be compounds with multiple atoms, doesn't really matter. The way you want to do this is the following. First, you start by drawing the lowest structure, the two-dimensional structure and then count, right? You want to count the number of electron pairs around each central atom, okay? And once you do that, you can then determine what the electron pair geometry is, which is one of these guys, okay? Then you go back here, and then you count, now separate the bonding and the lone pairs, okay? And don't forget that double or triple bond count just one as one pair, one effective pair. And then you go back to this table and see which of the following molecular geometry fits your count. If it's 5 and 0, it's going to be trigonal bipyramidal. If it's 3 bonding pair, 2 lone pair, we call it T-shape, and so on. And then assign appropriate bond angle based on this table. Now clearly, you need to remember this information. Okay, So you have to memorize both the electron geometry as well as the molecular geometry to be able to do this well. Okay, And in the next video, I'll go through a couple examples to show you how to do this.